In this section, we basically define age and relate it to all the understanding that we develop that all action happens in a thin layer called the boundary layer. So to repeat what we had discussed, uh, to solve for convection heat transfer, we need to solve both the energy equation and the flow equation. Okay. That's what we discussed in the past and we also said that's not something we want to do. We want to have this simplified description of convection with a H in it. Well, if this description need to be successful, then H needs to be defined in a way that these two are exactly equivalent. Otherwise, we, we're trying to approximate. We're not really trying to get the, the uh, full solution, the most accurate solution. Thus, all of the flow details, flow details that will be in the flow equation and things like velocity, geometry, fluid type, they're all they all need to be included somehow in my h calculation because the real thing has all of these okay so right there we know one thing that h is not a material property because it has all the flow details and heat transfer details also included in there. So how do we define this H so that it is exactly equivalent? So in this slide, we're going to define H. So as we have seen in the past, if we have a heated plate over which colder fluid flows, the solution is going to look like this. Now, before we do any details, we remind ourselves that the heat flow, if I asked you to calculate, you already know this formula that heat flow from 1 to 2, 1 being the surface and 2 being the fluid, heat flow from 1 to 2 is H times A times T1 minus T2, okay? This we have used. Now, let's look at this in little more detail. So here you see the temperature profile goes from the maximum value on the wall to the fluid temperature. So if I enlarge this, so if I enlarge this, it's going to look something like this, that we go from Ts to T infinity down here. Okay, so the temperature profile looks something like this at a location. It of course keeps changing. Okay, now at the surface, the fluid is at temperature uh, Ts because it's kind of stuck on the surface. But for that same reason that it's stuck on the surface, the velocity profile goes this way with the velocity of fluid being zero on the surface. So if the velocity of fluid is zero on the surface, then at this point, the velocity of fluid is zero, so the fluid is not moving. So the rate of heat coming out, just from this discussion, from this picture, the rate at which heat is coming out from the surface into the fluid is going to be given by the 
conduction equation, so this is Fourier's law, that will give me the rate at which heat is coming out. Why? Because after all, we are doing convection. It's because the velocity at this point, so this is y equal to 0, y being measured this way. So at this point, the velocity is 0. So there is no other effect. It's just conduction. Notice that the thermal conductivity is not that of this solid surface, whatever it is. It's fluid because we are on in the fluid side. And so this conduction that we are talking about is in the fluid. But even in the fluid, I can write the Fourier's law. This is perhaps the most important uh, concept in, kind, uh, in terms of doing the type of analysis that we're doing in this boundary layer and, uh, and the fact that the fluid velocity is zero. So therefore, heat transfer at the wall is by conduction only. Very important. So this is all the heat that goes out from one to two, it has to go through first this layer that's at rest. So in other words, this is all the heat that's coming out. But if I think in terms of convective heat transfer coefficient, then the rate of heat transfer would be H times temperature at the surface minus temperature at infinity. So it's basically I'm rewriting this equation, but it's for flux, so I do not have the area in there. So that is how I will normally write heat transfer. That is how I would like to use H. So then this heat better be the same as this one. So they have to be equal because it is the same heat flux that we can count this way or this way. So they are equal and that is the defining equation for H, meaning H must be defined this way so that I get the same heat flux as the reality. So rearranging the equation from the last slide, we get this. That is my defining equation for A. Defining equation uh, for H. You notice that H is closely related to the temperature gradient at the surface. That kind of makes sense because temperature gradient multiplied by the thermal conductivity gives heat flux and H measures heat flux. So H and temperature gradient are closely related. They're not exactly same, but they go the same direction. Now we have already shown that the temperature in a convection is a function of, among other things, uh, x, y, Reynolds number, uh, and Prandtl number. Okay. Um, so what are x, y? So x, y, if I think of again flow over a heated plate uh, and colder fluid flowing over it, so x is my distance this way and y is the vertical distance from the wall. So we already showed it just from the form of the temperature and flow equations that temperature is a function of x, y, Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So now we plug this in here. Okay, 
So if I do that, if I take a derivative of this quantity, whatever it is, you notice how we are tr completely avoiding the details, but just staying with the functional form. So if I take the derivative of something and then plug in y equal to zero, it will no longer be a function of y. Then h would be a function of this x, Reynolds number and Prandtl number. In other words, the form is telling me whatever h is, it, it will be a function of position x along the plate and also Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Now this did not give us the exact formula, but we are trying to avoid that anyway because that's quite involved. But we want to use this insight so that you know we have some idea of what to expect in terms of age from this fundamental understanding. So for example, we see that whatever H formula looks like, it better have these quantities, Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So with this insight, we are going to directly use the available formula. We will not actually get into the detailed solution for any particular situation, but we will use all the insight so far in terms of the boundary layers and um, the how we defined h and what should h depend on